us get to our main event tonight, our headline. This man has performed at the ESPYs. He's been on ESPN, ABC, headlined just about probably every comedy club within a 300 mile radius in the Northeast. One of my mentors from years ago, one of the funniest dudes I know, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Nick Mara. nowhere. Holy Christ. I called and asked for directions. They asked me to bring milk. Holy shit. I'm a little disoriented and I apologize because of the time change. I, I, got, I had to get used to the time change because where I am right in my house right now, I think it's uh, it's like 8 o'clock, but here it's uh, 1977. So you guys are Holy shit. Wow. I hope the gig goes well. I'd like to get that gig in Aaron. <laughs> That's where I went first. I went to Breezeport Road in Aaron. And it's like, you have arrived. I have. There ain't fucking nothing. There's nothing there, man. Holy shit. What the hell? Then I'm, I'm like eight miles away. I'm on the GPS trying to figure. Then it said, turn right on unnamed road. Oh, that's encouraging right there, right? So, oh, horse heads, holy shit, is this everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the three people that aren't here are out looting your houses. <laughs> wow, we could vote on the school budget while we're here. Everybody's here. <laughs> hey, how about a round of applause for the other comments? Come on, let them hear it. Joe, Steve, Kenneth was very funny. In fact, remind me, Kenneth, I want to get a picture with you later, uh, you know, in case I ever run for office. It's always nice to have you. Yeah, it's like, wow, man, this is crazy, though. So it's great to be here. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, in the middle of winter. Hold on, first of all, then, what, then when I get here, I'm not actually even here. They all looked at me like I was, you had to go through freaking, I don't know, I went by like the, the circus, and I went by the bearded lady, and then I went by some blind dancers and shit. And then the guy, I'm like, I'm here for the comedy show. Yeah, all the way down at the end of that hall. I go down to the end of the hall, and it's the ladies room. I'm like, wow, this is good. <laughs> It's in that secret doorway right there. Yeah, we got a black guy locked in there right now. <laughs> I'll let everybody come up later. So. Oh, man. But anyways, the middle of winter. Are we ready for that? It's supposed to get fucking cold tonight. Holy shit. Jesus. Let me just tell you, I know all about snow. You guys do too, man. It's crazy, man. We get a lot of snow where I live. Even though I travel a lot, I'm on the road a lot, I know we get a lot of snow in my house because when I'm on the road, I call home. My wife said she's getting eight inches every night. You know, <laughs> so I know we get a lot of snow. Thank God I have good neighbors. Yeah. In fact, my one neighbor said he was plowing her three times a day. You know, while I was away, I thought that was kind of nice. I don't understand it because I bought my wife a brand new snowblower, and she told me she was blowing the whole neighborhood while I was away. And, uh, my one neighbor said he liked her snapper. I don't know what the hell he meant. <laughs> we are obsessed with the weather though here. It's pretty funny because we're tough, right? Upstate New York, kind of a tough people right here. We get it, right? Now, you turn on the TV and say there's a hurricane, right? And it's gonna come up through Miami. Hurricane, you know, motherfucker is coming up the coast. Right? <laughs> and you got CNN, Fox, whatever you're watching, and they got this hurricane coming, and you're like, holy shit, right? We feel really bad, we're watching it for two days, and you're like, oh my God, they send money, we're sending supplies, troops, right? We got, oh my God, we feel horrible. Now we get, Three feet of snow in 45 minutes. You know what we get from them fuckers? Yeah. Pictures by the pool. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> I feel bad. I don't see the Red Cross helping me show my goddamn driveway. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Jesus. If the 
The weather, the we're obsessed with it, right? That's all anybody ever talks about. What about the weather? You seen the weather? Holy shit, the weather. What about the weather? You know, and we just want to bitch about it. We don't really care. You just want to bitch. You see a little old lady in Wegmans, right? And you're like, hey, it's a beautiful day today. You know, first thing she says, oh, but we're going to pay for it. Fuck you, lady. Enjoy the goddamn bitch. <laughs> worried about some big impending storm. I watched your local newscast down here. Holy shit. You have a 90 minute newscast. 90 minute newscast. 88 minutes of it was weather. That was all the guy talked about. We're going to get a shot of the weather. Then we're going to check the weather. Then we're going to look at that weather one more time. We're going to check the weather inside. We'll check the weather outside. And no matter what happens, that's the lead story. They don't give a shit, right? You walk by the TV, breaking news. We found a cure for cancer. Holy shit. But first, let's get a shot of the weather, shall we? <laughs> the weather guy's like all anal and shit. Woo! We got that super duper Doppler radar. He's like, we can zero in, man. We can tell you the weather right in your own backyard. It's not a weatherman, that's a stalker. Get the fuck out of my yard. <laughs> Then the guy's like, we're going to go to the map. We're going to show you the satellite of the previous 24 hours. Did anybody not catch that shit live? <laughs> or what are you guys calling up? At I talked to the weather guy. Yeah, it was about 3 o'clock today. That cold front came through. Son of a bitch, I was in the basement and I missed the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> what, you can replay that at 10 after 6? Well, TiVo then. Then they try to be really cool. The guy was really good. He's like, we're going to localize it. We are going to pinpoint your weather. You're like, okay, good. Elmira, 32 degrees. Ithaca, 31. Cortland, 34. They're like, okay, honey, maybe we should make the trip to Cortland. What do you think? <laughs> then they got that your news now. They do the weather every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes for the rest of your goddamn life every 10 minutes. And you live in this dopey town, still shitty. Back to you, Bill. It's like two o'clock in the morning, and shitty. Back to you. Had to get out of here, went to Florida. Who's been to Florida? Come on, applaud where are those people who've been to Florida? Anybody driven to Florida? Holy shit. Let me tell you, for those of you who have never driven to Florida, let me explain this to you, okay? Because if you live up this way and you want to go to Florida, you have to go through the entire state of Pennsylvania, top to bottom, and they fucking hate that shit. They do not like us, because we're just using their state to get to the other side, and it pisses them off. <laughs> they don't like it, man. In DPW, they get together, right? The captain comes out, he goes, all right, listen up. We got a guy in Binghamton, thinks he's gonna drive through our whole state, come out Harrisburg on the other side. Not on my fucking watch, let me tell you, baby. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put up 1,500 orange cones for no goddamn reason whatsoever. Now we're gonna put the potholes on the good side of the cones. There you go, how's that working out? Now you go down a little ways, now you think you're doing okay, now they put up two cement girders just about the width of your fucking car. <laughs> Sister Mary Catherine in front of you, Jeff Gordon behind you, give that a shot! <laughs> now you get down a little further, now you're like in Scranton, right? You're like, hey, I think I'm gonna make it. Nope, release the deer. Fuck! <laughs> Florida, oh my God, Florida. The bugs, the bugs in Florida are enormous. Holy shit, huge bugs. Even the ants, they got like big fat ants. Ugh. And I'm Italian, I know about fat ants. <laughs> a sister with a mustache to prove it, I swear to God, I do. Florida, man. I found out when I got there, Florida is the home of old people and their parents. Holy shit. <laughs> For 
first night I did a show, I'm in Orlando. The next night I had to go to Daytona. I went out to the GPS and said from Orlando to Daytona was 118 miles. And then next to that it said estimated time, seven and a half hours. <laughs> Apparently they knew the old bastard I was going to be behind the whole goddamn way. So all I saw was hat and knuckles down Route 4. <laughs> What is this fascination though, with old people? Old people wanting to do young things. Mick Jagger, you guys know Mick Jagger, right? Mick Jagger, Rolling Stones, yes. He's 80 years old. His wife just gave birth to his child. I'm not making that up. He's 80 years old. Can you imagine that? The baby came out, was 56 years old, holy <laughs> shit. Poor little bastard having trouble with his prostate already. <laughs> Can you imagine an 80 year old guy with a baby? They could go through stages together, right? <laughs> Both be drooling, <laughs> Both be wearing diapers, Both be in a walker at the same time. <laughs> then I read this just recently a 66 year old woman gave birth naturally. Oldest woman to give birth, 66. Now, apparently, she wanted to breastfeed. The baby didn't want any part of that at all. <laughs> How is a 66-year-old lady supposed to breastfeed? Put the baby on the floor? There you go. That's nice. <laughs> I don't think she should breastfeed. I mean, at that age, the milk might be spoiled. Am I right? Oh, man. Okay, listen, are you all right there, ma'am? You going to be okay there? Ah, we don't need to lose one more person. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? No. Oh, nuts. I've been traveling a lot lately, doing a lot of clubs, colleges, casinos. Where's my gamblers? You got any gamblers in the house? Yeah, 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 sure. To build a casino every freaking five minutes. Holy Christ. I'm the worst gambler. You ever been to the, the, the spinning rock or turning boulder over there? You know what I'm talking about? Those Indian bastards. I lost a hundred dollars in the first machine I played. That was the ATM. Shit! <laughs> But here's the deal, I'm not, I'm not lying about this. For uh, 12 years, I was the house MC at the Turning Star, right? And uh, every Tuesday we did a show, and it was great, I love it. It's, again, Native American casino, right? I didn't know anything. Guy came up to me before the show, he said, listen, no Native American jokes. I'm like, all right, it's fine. So after the show, this guy comes up to me, and he goes, hey, I'm Native American, you offended me. I said, I offended you? How? I have my reservations about you too, sir. <laughs> Let's bury the hatchet and move on, shall we? <laughs> That's the way it fucking works, people. You do three, sure, sure. Oh, man, I tell you. Anybody remember when the Turning Stone first opened up years ago? Anybody that old at all? Anybody? It was dry. Couldn't drink. You couldn't drink at the casino. Who the hell wants to lose a thousand dollars sober, right? <laughs> I want to be shit-faced for the fuck a phone bill. Let it ride. That's what I want. <laughs> I went to Vegas. Come on, applaud. Who's been to Vegas? Applaud. Let's go. Come on. Yes, sir. You ever been to Vegas? You ever been to Vegas, sir? No? You ever been to Elmira? You ever been to Elmira? <laughs> you ever been to Aaron? You ever been to Aaron? I was there earlier today. It's really nice. She's a beautiful lady. And, uh, uh, Vegas is insane. So let me tell you about Las Vegas. First of all, when you're in Vegas, I'm not a big drinker. I don't have anything against drinking. I'm just not a big drinker. But when you're in Vegas, oh, they want you to drink. They force you to drink. That's right. That girl with a big boob, she sticks them right in your face and drink it, drink it. I didn't know. <laughs> It was like a photo finish in a blimp race. Holy shit, look at that. <laughs> so, well, you can't argue with those two points, lady. I'm drinking. 
So I'm, I'm staying in a place called Mandalay Bay, huge hotel, right? And I'm sitting at the table and I'm drinking a gambling, drinking a gambling, drinking a gambling. Bam, now I'm shit-faced, right? I'm barreled. I don't know if I'm on foot or horseback, I am gone. But I'm winning, I'm up like a thousand dollars, right? But I'm shit-faced, out of my mind. It's 4.30 in the morning, holy shit. I'm starving, Jesus Christ, I am starving. Hungry as a hostage right now. I gotta get something to eat. So here's what I did, and I don't recommend this for anyone. I ordered room service. Yeah. Anybody here ever ordered room service in a major hotel? They bang the shit out of you. It was $18 for an order of toast. I'm like, does it come with butter? $22.50. All right, I get it. Jesus. What do I care though, right? I got a thousand dollars. I called down, I said, give me a give me a Reuben sandwich and a bag of chips and a Coke. Now the guy wheels in the room, he's got flowers and candles, balloons and shit. Give me the start! Give me the bill. He gives me the bill. $82.10. $82.10 .10 for a sandwich. I thought it was gonna be like 50 bucks. I was gonna punch the shit out of the guy, right? Now I gotta give him a tip. Here's a hundred dollars. Get out of here. Oh my god. 8210. I couldn't sleep the whole night. I'm going over 8210. 8210. I got up in the morning. I said, that's bullshit. There had to be some sort of mistake. Look at the bill again. Shit. I was staying in room 8210. <laughs> <laughs> $27. Son of a bitch, a hundred dollar bill. Get knocking on my door. Got a friend of mine, he's a midget. He's a midget, little guy, good guy, little guy. Guess what? Told me a secret. Told me he was gay. That was weird. For all these years, he finally came out of the cupboard. And we're just so happy. <laughs> I actually dated a midget girl once. That was weird, man. We broke up. I was devastated, you know, because I was nuts over her. And, uh... <laughs> we dated like four months before she went up on me. I swear to God. <laughs> Get out, lady. Just go. Lady. I'm going to tell you guys. This is exactly what I'm going to talk about right now. Okay. Work now. Who do we got? Anybody here like that's been that's dating or engaged or anything like that? Give me anybody. You got it right here. Okay. What's that? So we're dating. You're what? You're engaged. Dating. Dating. How long have you been dating for? Four years. Four years. Jeez. <laughs> All right, easy, easy. Boy, the crowd is fucking incredible, huh? It's like, a, listen, comedian boy, shut up. We're trying to shit on him. Listen. All right, now I don't want to know. How, how do you, any, now this is going to sound terrible. Have you been married before? You already been married? Yeah, okay, so you know what that's all about. Anybody, like, anybody that's like 20 ish that has never been married, where are we? Anybody? There we go, right there. You guys dating? Right there, you guys dating, married, sport, pork, and what do we got here? I can't see. You're dating. How long have you been dating for? Three years. Three years. Okay, good. Now, neither one of you been married or no? Okay, do you live together? Okay, that's all right. You should. You should. Then when you get married, you live apart. That's what I say. That's the best way. All right, listen to me. What is your name, sir? I'm going to explain a few things to you. Josh. All right, Josh, pay attention. This is important. Because women are very different. Okay? Very different. I don't know if you knew this or not. Different. Let me give you an example how this works, okay? How old are you, first of all, Josh? 25. Jesus Christ, I got fucking hemorrhoids older than you. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to relate here, people. Who's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Where do I, how do I, 
right, just pay attention. Shut up. All right, Josh, listen, this is important. Okay, so women are different, but now, when you're older, you can understand this. Let me give you an example of the difference, okay? I'm outside shoveling in the driveway, okay, because that's what we do in Central New York in, in July. And, uh, <laughs> just try to throw that in there just to get a laugh. Because I get paid by the joke. All right, fuck you. All right, listen. <laughs> So I'm outside, shoveling the drive, my cell phone's on the kitchen table and it rings, right? My wife's inside, so she answers it, that's fine, right? Yeah, hello, it's my friend Matt, and he said, oh, is Nick around? She goes, you know what, he's doing a driveway, he'll be in in like five minutes. And Matt says, okay, can you just have him give me a call when he gets in? Fine. So I come in the house, right? My wife says, uh, Matt called. I said, okay, thank you very much, I'll call. That's the whole story right there, Josh. That's it. See, isn't that cool? Isn't that a great story as a guy? Now, let me explain to you if the roles are reversed. Now, I'm in the house, my wife's outside, right? Her phone rings, I said, hello, it's her friend Jennifer. She said, can you have Suzanne give me a call when she gets in? I said, absolutely. My wife comes in, I said, hey, Jennifer, call. Oh, what did she want? I got. She just said, you know, to call. She gonna be home? Okay. She she just said to give her a call. Was she upset? She just said to, to give you a call when she when you get a chance later. Is it important? I don't fucking know. becomes the DA. All of a sudden she's like shining the light in my eyes. What time did she call? I don't know. <laughs> Women are very different. They even pee different, right? No, listen. I'm gonna listen to me. I'm gonna explain this to you, Josh, because you just saw that. You just witnessed it, okay? Have you ever noticed in a public restroom, women pee in pairs? You ever notice that? Right? We just saw it. All right? All right. Now, that's right. Now, I'm going to explain to you because I didn't know. Okay? So I thought I'd investigate, you know. And, and uh, I didn't know. First of all, I'm going to tell you what it's not. There's no seesaw in there. Because that's what I thought maybe they had. Because you know? they always went in in pairs and I thought, you know. But no, it's not. I just peek. It's really nice in there, ladies. They got flowers and shit. We don't have that. But that's a different story. But here's the deal. In a public restroom, you women do not like to touch the seat. That's right. So what do you girls do? You do this whole hovering thing, right? Yes, you're six, eight inches over the bowl, right? Now, it's very difficult to line it up. So you bring in a friend as a spotter. <laughs> That's right. She stands in front. She goes, Marge, move over. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Now pay, and then she pays. <laughs> now men, we don't need spotters. We just pee, right? Josh, can you pee in the dark? Yes, is the answer. Okay, good. Okay. He's obviously not married because usually we look at her and go, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you know why that is? Because men do not pee by sight. Men pee by sight. <laughs> Am I right? You know, you're pissing right in the middle of that bowl. It makes a crisp, clean sound, bullseye. Now, if you move just a little different noise, bring it back. Am I right? <laughs> Whoops, trash can. Easy. <laughs> now, suppose you're peeing and you don't hear anything. Yeah. You're pissing in a hamper. That's not good. <laughs> Smart boy. All right. So I don't know. It hasn't helped at all. Life is not 
months, man, I'm telling you. Trying to stay in shape, exercise. Jesus Christ. I'm you know what I, I did? I joined that fucking, do they have them, uh, what the hell is it? Planet Fitness or something? It's like $9 a month or something. But here's the deal. Here's what they don't tell you, right? What's the scoop? You're not allowed to grunt or groan. None of that shit. Yeah, I got thrown out. I was putting on my fucking shoes. Oh, jeez! <laughs> they don't like comedians at the gym. We do goofy shit. I put the rowing, took the rowing machine, threw it in the pool. Row, you fat bastard. Come on! You're fat, you're gonna drown. Pick it up. Let's go. I don't know the whole thing. I've taken vitamins. They don't give me any more energy, but when I pee, it comes out that fluorescent green color. Wow, look at that. Boy, with the shit in the background, doesn't it look nice? <laughs> Last thing you want to do is bomb in four cents. Next <laughs> thing you know, it'll travel all the way to Aaron. Before you die, you can't get any work in Dryden. So, 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 tough. so uh, yeah, that's my life. I got kids. Where's those with kids? Applaud. Who's got kids? Yeah. See? yeah. Those are the real fucking terrorists right there, people. Let me tell you about my life. Not that you give a shit, but I'm going to tell you anyways because you're in wherever we are. Are we horses? <laughs> Breezeport Road, and you just you confused. You don't know what's the name of the place. L. Yeah. <laughs> just L. Just a little bit. You go to the Y. It's up the road. <laughs> Sesame Street. You can do C later. <laughs> so uh, kids are bad. So I'm, I have older, two older boys and my daughter. But I get it. My oldest son Matt is uh, 33 now, and. Uh, he was a very, very good baseball player growing up, really good baseball player. In fact, he came to me one day and he goes, Dad, there's a chance I might get drafted. I was like, well, you know, when I was your age, I could have been drafted. Remember when we went to Canada? For <laughs> 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 That's a good story. Uh, but he was a very, very good baseball player. Um, and, and I said, Matt, listen, I know you think you're going to be the next Derek Jeter and you're going to make millions. God love you. But do you have like a backup plan, anything? Appease me. He's like, yeah, Dad, I think I want to be a teacher. Like, wow, there you go. I go, good for you. Yeah, what kind of teacher you want to be, Matt? A math teacher, a science teacher? I want to be a substitute teacher. <laughs> Dad, they don't do shit, man. They put a movie in, sit around all day. That's my boy. Set the bar low right there. That is the best. Expensive too, the little pricks. Came to me one day, he goes, Dad, I need new snakes. They're on sale at Dick's for $167. Give a shit where they're on sale. I'm not spending $167 on your fucking snakes. You know what he said to me? Huh. What did you pay for a Reuben sandwich in Vegas? Shut up, you piece of shit. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Do you understand? But the relentless, he kept coming, Dad, we gotta go to Dick's, the sale ends love, we gotta go to Dick's. No, and then he gives me, oh, well, your dad. My dad. <coughs> My dad was a man of very few words. No! It was all the other things. We used to get our shoes tied together in that bin, you know what I'm talking about? Like a size four was tied to a six. Shut up, they're two dollars, get in the fucking car. <laughs> But Dad, we gotta go to Dick's, we gotta get there by 11, we're not doing it. But guess what, Josh, I'm crafty. I found out you can get deals on the internet. But don't do what I did, I went with my son, we went to the computer, we went to dicks.com. Oh my God! <laughs> Big giant penis right on the board. Don't laugh, my wife's behind me going, check out BJ's. Oh, come on! My other 
son, Vinny, he's a piece of work, too. He's 30 years old, Vinny. He tried to pull a fast one on me, that little <laughs> He's like, Dad, I gotta have a car for college. I need a car for college. That's all he was every day. I gotta have a car for college. He went to the University of Phoenix online. I think that was the most shit we came up with. My wife, though, she drives me nuts. I'm doing some, I'm not handy. I'm stupid. First of all, I'm an Italian, right? So my dad did everything. He did a lot of fake shit. And if he didn't, he just told you it was fixed and you fucking believed him. He did <laughs> My, my dad's 91 years old now, so my sisters thought it would be cool, because this is what Italian sisters do, is it, for Christmas, they got him a remote control fireplace. You don't get a 91-year-old man a remote control fireplace. I go over there and he's all pissed off. I'm like, Dad, what's the matter? He goes, I can't hear the TV. Jesus Christ, it's so fucking hot here. <laughs> My dad could fix anything. I was dumb as a bucket of fucking hammers. I was horrible, man. He used to get so mad at me. And I, and I would always, I'd get into arguments with my wife because I would always try to fix shit and then fuck it up and then you got a 17 trips to Home Depot, right? And then what do you do the 18th time? You go to Lowe's because you're tired of looking at that same asshole at Home Depot going, I told you to get it. So we're gonna get, we're gonna do a little remodel in the house, right? Yeah, we're gonna remodel the kitchen. Anybody ever here ever remodel the kitchen? Oh, expensive, holy shit, yes. It's bullshit though. We spent $35,000 on kitchen countertops and cabinets. $35,000. And he said, yeah. yeah, blame the fucking comic. It's been broke all fucking night long. He comes over here and you fucked it up, sir. <laughs> Trust me, even the black guy knew how to use it. I don't know what you were thinking. But, you know. Wow. wow, this is really good, man. Wow, we're in horse sets too, man. This is crazy. There's some... some Prick is in the back pedaling like shit to get this stuff all going and shit. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh, remodeling, thank you. This is what happens. Because my wife's usually here to finish my sentences and shit, you know, because that's what she does. And then, then I gotta try to, because, see, as dumb as we are, we gotta be smart. Because my wife will finish my sentence and then I can't let her know that that's actually what I was thinking. So now I gotta try to think of something that I wasn't thinking about just to fuck her up. And it pisses me off because I can't think of it. And then I gotta give in. It's bullshit. Sorry, I lost it. It's okay. Expensive, holy shit. $35,000 for cabinets and countertops. Here's my wife. One, two, three, four. I go, what are you doing? She goes, I'm counting. I go, counting what? So I'm counting to see how many knobs we got to buy. Okay. Knobs. We spent $35,000. They don't come with fucking knobs. I wanted to open them up and have cereal and shit on the inside. Who buys a car without door handles? You want to get in? I'm sorry, sir. We can't do that. <laughs> you gotta talk to the door handle guy to get you in the car. <laughs> what the frick? My whole life is stupid. So now, now we gotta buy appliances. Now it's gonna get tricky because I'm gonna. I gotta show you guys something. But we gotta buy appliances, and my wife's very particular about what she wants. You know. Well, first of all, here's the deal. Because the guy is here. Now there's the guy. Right? This is it. Everybody has a guy. This is the guy. I don't know shit. I'm here. My wife's over here. My wife will be in my goddamn ear. Don't forget to tell him about the floor. Make sure he does the rug. Make sure he puts the walls on straight. Make that. I'm like, why don't you tell him? Oh, I wouldn't know what to tell him. You just bitch at me for 10 minutes. He's right there just bitching him. I'll move back bitching him. So now we gotta buy appliances. So my wife says, 
what kind of dishwasher do you use? So I don't know, you've been doing them up for now, that worked out well for me. <laughs> I'm doing a load alone, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Some of you do. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal. My wife was very particular about the dishwasher. It had to be charcoal gray. Charcoal gray. Because that matched her shoes or whatever. I don't know. That's right. So here's the deal. Now it takes the guy forever to put it. Are you going to put it in? Are you going to put it in? I don't know. So finally I tell the guy, you got to put this thing in today. Or I'm sick of the pit bull right fucking on you. <laughs> now. My wife comes home and she was extremely upset with me. And I have to show you guys, and I don't know how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have to step out into the actual crowd here in horse heads. Uh, but first, I gotta show you a picture, because I'm an idiot too, of my, of my dishwasher. I wanna show you a picture so that you guys believe me. But here, here's the deal, I, I suck with, I don't understand, I don't get this shit, it drives me fucking crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Technology drives me nuts. You know? Like I found out with an iPhone, okay? I have an iPhone, this is cool now, right? I found out, you, if you take a picture with an iPhone, it doesn't take the picture right away. There's like that little delay. You know how I found that out? <clears throat> I was at the state fair with my daughter, and I wanted to get a picture of her on a ride, and I got a beautiful picture of an Asian family on the tilt the world And, uh... <laughs> All right, hold on, people. This is gonna take me a minute. I'll just shut up. I'm really am stupid, and I don't mean that. Okay. Now, all right. I'm gonna have to come down and show somebody this. I don't. Will this work when I go out into the crowd? Oh, you, you hear him? Oh, you bring it in. Okay. Jesus. Shut up. All right. Now, I'm gonna show you, ma'am, because you look trustworthy. Okay. What color? What color would you say that is? Silver. <laughs> Trustworthy is just happens to be colorblind. That's great. That's great. Now you screwed up. Okay, ready? You want to come? Oh, thank you. I gotta get the only one, right? Jesus. Holy shit. I know you got shit to do. Well, actually, I've been to your town. You ain't got shit to do. All right, now. What do you got? What color? Oh, thank you. One guy, he noticed that. Green, right? Can you see that, green? Green. Can you guys see that? Okay, now they can. Thank you for your help, man. Wow. <laughs> Is that green, sir? Okay, Lumberjack Joe even said it was green. Look at that. That from Duck Dynasty's in the front row. I can't All right, green. Like puke green. Like avocado. Remember the Brady Bunch? That fucking gross color green. My wife wants to rip my goddamn ball. She is so mad at me. Now, here's what happened. Now you gotta grow a set, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna go down to Home Depot and I'm gonna bitch at that little prick. I am pissed off, I'm telling you. I go down to Home Depot, I said, I'll take care of this. I get in line and I'm stewing a little old lady behind me. She goes, what's the matter? I gotta tell you what's the matter, lady. We spent like $35,000 in this place. I asked for charcoal gray dishwasher. That's what I got, does that look gray? She goes, oh my God, it's green. Yeah, no shit, it's green, lady. She's like, well, weren't you there when he put it in? Shut up, I know I was there. Get up to the line. He said, listen, I want to talk to the manager. He comes over. He's 14 years old. <laughs> His sneakers lit up as he came around the corner. <laughs> I said, listen, buddy, this is bullshit. We spent a lot of money in this place, okay? Spent $35,000. I asked for charcoal gray dishwasher. I got that. Does that look great? It's green, you asshole. He goes, relax. Relax. I got two women on my ass. One of them I just fucking met, all right? He goes, sir, relax. If you just peel back that green plastic, you're great this one. Shit. <laughs> Laugh because it's funny. Cry because it's true. Goddamn stage, I gotta say that. It's nice. Give us a nice sprinkled rug there. That's beautiful. Right there. So get him a nice couch and then watch him trip as he tries to get off the stage. That's 
I'm afraid to leave. You all right there? You hack up along there. Holy shit. You need to get a cigarette, do you, sir? Yeah, I know. Well, are you a smoker, sir? Oh, yeah, I can tell. Holy Christ, Jesus. Smoking sucks now because you can't smoke anymore. It's bullshit, right? Here's the thing. Like, with you guys, you have to go outside to smoke. Don't you hate that? Yeah. That's bullshit, right? And it's cold out, right? Yeah, I don't blame you. He's pissed because if he goes outside, it's cold. He could catch a cold, right? That's bullshit, right? Yes. That scares you, a cold, the sniffles. Cancer doesn't scare that you at all. <laughs> but if you come down with some sniffles, that's bullshit. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's true now. I was in Indiana, I don't mean to brag. Okay. <laughs> God, you ever been over that way in the Midwest? Holy yes. flat, holy shit. If you jump, you can see Canada, I swear to God. And so, they, in, in Indiana, it's a law now that you can't, you can't smoke anywhere, right? But, the government or the state, whatever, came up with this thing where you could smoke in certain places. You know, obviously they had a pony up or whatever it is, right? But you can smoke in the bars, okay? But you can't smoke anywhere within 500 feet of the bar. So if you're in the bar smoking and you walk out, you have to put that fucking cigarette out because you are not allowed to not smoke outside. That's bullshit. Do you understand? And I fucked up the joke. But I don't give a shit, people. I don't really care. Yeah, my wife's from Nebraska. Jesus, does anybody know anybody from there? Jeez. Yeah, they don't understand that, man. That place is backwards as all. You think this is bad? Holy Christ. Every car has 400,000 miles on it and only one set of brakes. Everybody just drives. Nobody stops for shit, man. You got to go to Walmart? Yeah, it's four hours. Okay, you just go. Anyways, all right. So what time we got? How are we doing it for time? 8.30, all right. We got, we got a few minutes. What else can I... Uh, can I bitch about because my life sucks? Couple things uh, that I don't understand. The yo-yo, did you guys know the yo-yo was originally a weapon back in like the 1300? People used to fight with yo-yos, I'm not making that up. Imagine a guy robbing a bank with a yo-yo right up against the wall. <laughs> One false move, I walk the dog right here. Don't make me go around the world. I am annoyed by the weed eater. I went out, I spent $75 on a weed eater. I got home and the power cord on it. Was that fucking weed? Do you have any weeds near the outlet? How am I supposed to get to the swing set? Driving in here, you ever see this sign? Adopt the highway? The hell does that mean? Wait a minute, they're leaving. <laughs> one of them. Are they women or men? They have a spotter? I don't understand. That's <laughs> cool. That's cool. Thanks for coming. That's bizarre. Okay, how are you? Well, oh, man, they're leaving. I'm getting a standing ovation, two people at a time. This is great. Thank you very much. And we hated him. Get out. We got shit we got to do, man. We got to feed the chickens at quarter to, quarter to nine here. See, this fucked up my whole show. Okay, what was I just talking about? A sign, right? Did I, did I do this? Yeah. Adopt the highway. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Now, now, see, I was on a roll. See, this is what happens in comedy because you just kind of go and then boom, right? So, uh, fucked it all up, didn't you? <laughs> Four people left my show and it just screwed me right up. So, you ever see this? I'm going to just pretend like I never did it before. You won't have that problem because you're shit faced. Okay. Uh, you ever see this sign? Adopt a highway? What the hell does that mean? Call the adoption agency. They said my yard wasn't big enough. Where the fuck would I put it? <laughs> see, if I could have just flowed into that, that would have been fucking funny. <laughs> There's a bank near my house that upsets me. Here you go, folks. This is the dumbest bank in the whole world. Okay? Now, I've been doing comedy a long time. I can't give you the name of the bank. I'll give you the initials. It's uh, M and T. Now, <laughs> in the drive through window, they have an ATM machine equipped in Braille. 
in the drive through window. I went into the bank, I'm like, lady, I don't get it. She goes, it's for the passenger. Oh, so the dog is supposed to drive, is that the idea? Give me the yo-yo, lady, I'll kick the shit right out of you. Oh, and I gotta tell you this, speaking of dogs, so my dog keeps running away. My wife and I checked in, have you ever heard of that uh, invisible fencing? You know what I'm talking about? I'm not making this up, in Syracuse, New York, there's a place called the Invisible Fence Company of Syracuse. We drove down there, we couldn't find the place. Where the hell is it? <laughs> Got there, this guy's giving me a tour. He showed me this huge, empty warehouse, apparently full of invisible fences. <laughs> I didn't want to look like an asshole. I'm with my wife going, honey, do you want that one or the one over there? Be better with the kid. So we got the fence, the guy came in, told me he's all done. How do I know you didn't fence in the driveway? <laughs> Fixed his ass. I wrote him a check, I signed it in invisible ink. There you go. <laughs> Get your sense. All right. So, there's enough more smart water to keep me on. Hmm. I'm glad they put all the uh, piping all up in here so it looks like I'm on the fucking SS Poseidon as we're going through the room here. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to be like an L or not. There's an outlet, an outlet right up there, and it's really convenient for uh, LeBron James, I guess, would be right up there. Uh, so yeah, I got an idea. Let's put that. The wall might be upside down. Nah, throw an outlet at the top. That'd be right. I know a guy at Home Depot. I visited him about 18 fucking times. So, uh, I was talking about my boys, I got my two oldest son, Matt is 33, Vinny's 30, and here's the deal when you have older kids, I, and, and I, this really isn't funny, but I'm, I'm working on it, so shut up and just pay attention. Like, my son Vinny is... Oh, it's an emergency? Thirsty. Oh, you're thirsty? Okay. Is he showing me his phone for it? Where is it? Oh, it's an empty beer? Okay, so... You noticed that, but you couldn't see that that fucking thing was green? I don't understand. All of, sudden, all of a sudden, we find out she's got x-ray vision. You were fucking with me the whole time. You knew what's going on. And I... I, I you do. Thank you very much for shitting on me, lady. I appreciate it. Seriously, though, you guys are my I will. I, I'm going to remember this show until I get to my car. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm talking about my daughter, right? Yes, so will you. Thank you, lady. There we go. Now they're all shitting on me. We don't care. We live here. Uh, my daughter. Oh, so my son, Vinny. Now, my son, Vinny, first of all, my kids, anybody like in their 50s or 60s, give it up a little bit. Applaud maybe if you got that. Okay. So you have older kids, right? And they're probably still on your cell phone plan. Is that the deal, right? Oh, 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 okay, they're on her mother, so, and so are you. That's pretty good. Maybe that's how they learn. I don't know what to do. Well, just get on mom's plan. That's what I did, man. That's how... <laughs> but my kids are on my plan forever, right? So now they got to pay them 100 bucks a month or anything. Just give me $100 a month, right? Okay. My son, Matt, is pretty technical, right? The little Venmo action. You guys familiar with that shit, right? Boom, 100 bucks right to me, right? My son Vinny, no, no, no. Like, Dad, I gotta pay cash. It's like a drug deal. I gotta pay cash. Yeah. So every week, I'm like, Vinny, you got that, you know, $100 for the phone. Like, yeah, 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 okay. Dad, come by today later, I'll get it for you, okay. So I take my daughter, we go over, we see Vinny. I say, hey, Vinny, you got the $100? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, Dad, you know, I got like 65. All right, I'll take it, you know, because that's what you're gonna do, right? You're gonna do that or nothing. So I take the 65, he said, ah, I promise, Dad, yeah, okay. And then my daughter goes, hey, Dad, you know, we never see Vinny very much. Can we take him out for dinner? Okay, so that was $135. So now he owed me 60. I don't know, somehow I got fucked out of $200. I don't know what it Anyways, but my daughter, oh, here he comes. How'd you get up here? Did you see those other fuckers that left, man? That pissed me off, those people. She... She knew your beer. What color is the beer? Can you tell me that? <laughs> All right, so we got, we got it. 
and she did it. So my daughter, she's 18 now, right? So listen, she's paying the ass too because now she wants, she's gonna go to college. But she's a smart, she's like real smart, like straight A's. She got like pissed because she got like a 96 in chemistry, right? If my boys or I ever got a 96 in anything, we'd still be having a fucking parade today, right? My daughter is like pissed off. But anyways, so now the mail comes and it's all for her, right? We get University of Notre Dame, I got the Tennessee, I got Vanderbilt, holy, then I get something, this one thing, and look, it says some nursing school. I said to my daughter, you're gonna, I didn't know you were looking at nursing schools. She goes, that's a nursing home, Dad. That's for you. Oh, shit! <laughs> With any luck, they'll have early admission, Dad. You can get right in there. So anyways, here's the deal. Here's what I gotta tell you, and I'm gonna get you out of here because I gotta tell you. So my, my son is 33 and 30, and then, boom, right? We now the daughter comes along a really late, long time, right? But I want you to tell you, when it was time for my daughter, I was there. I was right there, man. I was good. I held my wife's hand, I helped her breathe. It was quite an adoption. Should have seen it breathe. <laughs> we went to those Pontiac Le Mans classes. Have you guys ever seen this? You know what I'm talking about? Do you know you can get pictures of your kids before they're even born? They got these sonogram things they got now. Do you guys know this? The only one to get to sign for anything from the sonogram is the doctor or the mother, right? Or in the back, doctor's like, there's a hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a foot. I'm gonna back home. Where's his dick? Because that's what we want to know, right? Oh, it's a girl. All right, where's her tits, Doc? Help me out. Oh, I get it, just like her mom. And so. <laughs> one thing I learned in Lamas class is that the husband or the father needs to be the calming source. I was calm. My wife said it was time. I calmly went to the phone. I said, Doctor, Doctor, my wife's having a baby. Doctor said, is this her first child? I said, no, this is her husband. You asked Saul? First child is substitute teaching right now and he can't get to the phone. So he said we needed to get to the hospital right away. Very cool, calm, get in the car, back out of the driveway, bam! Right into the invisible fence. I never saw that. It always happens at like three in the morning. We don't have any money. I go to the bank, I'm in the drive-thru, bam, a blind guy slammed right into me. He was driving a Saturn, it was really... We drove like 100 miles an hour to the hospital. We almost got like three accidents, thank God. You know, my wife's a good driver, because I never... This one guy got pissed, oh, we cut him off, he was pissed. Rolled the window and I said, hey, what do you think you own the road? I said, no, but we're thinking of adopting. You know, we called. <laughs> So he wanted to fight. I said, honey, get the yo-yo. Come on, we'll take him on. <laughs> so we drove 100 miles an hour to get to the hospital so we could sit for 57 hours. I remember watching a Today Show three fucking times. Now here's what I don't like about this. Here's my wife, legs spread apart, like a Ford up on blocks at this point. <laughs> Everybody had a hand in there. <laughs> Even a guy sweeping the floor, holy shit, look at that, I don't like that. She's got her legs put up her, we're all standing, it's like we're at the airport waiting for our luggage. Come on! I'm going, that one's not mine, that one's black. Come on! So it was getting close, I said, Doc, Doc, we have an emergency. He said, what's that? I said, my water just broke. I pissed all over the front of me. Doctor said you're taking vitamins, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Baby came flying out. The screaming, the crying is incredible. Finally, the doctor looked at me and said, "Shut up!" I said, "I'm so sorry." <laughs> but now they look to the husband or the father to cut the cord. You got this doctor with 300 years of medical experience delivering thousands of kids. Here I am, fluorescent green piss all over the front of me, and the cord is like 30 feet long. Holy shit, if my weed eater had that cord, I could get to the swing set. All right, all right, we gotta get you guys out of here. I'm serious. All right, real fast. Promotion, ready? Pay attention, people. I wrote a book. Come on, give somebody excitement about writing a book. Yeah? I know, I know. Even you, you're looking at me like, you don't look 
smart enough to write a book. I'm really not. Here's the deal, because I'm 100, and I don't understand that whole interweb and internet thing, and, and so I don't know the Twitter, the twat, or whatever any of that shit is, I don't understand. But I went out to uh, Facebook or Facebook, and, and my kids are like, Dad, you gotta do this. This is years ago, and they were like, Dad, you gotta, you gotta go on to social media so people know who you are. I'm like, okay, good. So uh, I found out if you're on Facebook that people like this shit, right? So what I did was I took a year in my life, and I would just, on Facebook, just write stupid shit that my kids did, which was every fucking day, I want you to know, sometimes twice a day. And I got all these likes, so I put them all in a book, and they're little posts, a year in my life from the year I turned 50 to 51. So it's a, it's more of a, it's not a book you're gonna read cover to cover. It's, it's like a bathroom book, you know what I'm saying? Like, read a couple posts and then you wipe and then you read a couple more. <laughs> and uh, anyways, I sell them for 15 bucks and if you want, I'll autograph it and make it worth 10. Okay, now, uh, I, take, I take cash. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna end real quick with this last thing, real fast. Uh, where's the, anybody in their upper 40s, 42, 43? How old are you there, big guy? What do you got? Hey, I had to ask her. What? I had to ask her. I know. That's, it changes every year, so it's fucking hard. I know. <laughs> last year and then now. So when you turn 50, right? You know what happens. I'm gonna tell you this, Mr. 25-year-old piece of shit little guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're gonna start groaning and shit. Yeah, when you turn 50, you gotta go see the doctor. You gotta go see Dr. Jellyfinger. Okay, I'm just gonna explain it to you how this works. Because if anybody's been through this, here's the deal. I wanna pay attention to this. Because I just turned 50 uh, 10 years ago. And, uh, <laughs> all right. So, here's the deal. You have to prep, okay? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No. Good, this is why this is important, okay? Here's the deal, you need to think about this for a second, okay? Now, they gotta go up in there and the doctor's gotta look around for stuff, okay? So, when he reaches up there, he doesn't wanna grab a handful of shit, he's got stuff to do, you know what I'm saying? So you drink this stuff to clean yourself out. You need to be clean, you need to be clear, okay? And it tastes like shit, it's called go lightly. Okay, so. Here's the deal. You gotta drink this shit every 10 minutes until you're completely clear, right? And it's, it's taste more, right? So I get the family together, I go, all right, listen up guys, here's the scoop, we'll make this real quick. We have a little meeting, I said, all right, listen up people, first thing we're gonna do, clear a path to the bathroom, okay? Get your bikes, your skates, get all that shit out of there. Next, for the next two hours, the bathroom is mine. I said to my son, if you gotta shit, you shit in the front yard, I don't really care, okay? So now my daughter's like, you gotta drink, and you gotta, you gotta just drink it. And it's like, you gotta drink, I don't know how many freaking gallons of this bullshit is gonna taste horrible. So they pour it, and they make it. My daughter's the timekeeper. And I said, all right, but here's the deal. I'm just gonna drink it, because you gotta be smart. You can't sip that shit. You gotta just be a fucking man and just die. That's right, you just go for it. So I said, all right, you know, here we go. And I, and I chug it down. Oh, and I mean, the taste is just horrible. Oh, God, but I did. I drank the whole thing. And you wait. <laughs> I got nothing. My family is standing around waiting for like a nuclear explosion, right? We're all standing there. And I said, I'm nothing. So now my daughter's like, it's time, all right, all right. So I gotta drink another one and I chug it down and I wait. And I wait. And I'm like, right, this is bullshit. Now my wife, because women are brilliant, she's like, you know, it says go lightly. You know, it's modern medicine. Maybe that's true, go lightly, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. I want you to know because I, uh, I was fine until I sneezed and then I shit all over the fucking rug. Okay? Now I'm in a one-in-one -one situation. One drink, one shit. One drink, one... Now I'm drinking it right on the shitter. I'm just drinking it right on the shitter. Finally, I'm like, cut out the middle man. Get in there. Go on. <laughs> then the doctor calls and he goes, 
are you clear? Am I clear? I said, Doc, you could shove a hula hoop up there if you wanted to. So now the next day I gotta go in for the procedure. The doctor comes in, here he is, 14 years old, just got off of work at Home Depot, here we go. Shit! I said, listen, Doc, I'm scared, I'm nervous. He goes, you got nothing to worry about, relax. I said, okay. He said, take a deep breath, just relax. I said, all right. He goes, now you know you gotta take off your pants. He said, I know. So I take off my pants. Don't look at me when I'm taking my pants off. I said, all right. Doc, where do I put my pants? He goes, put them over there with mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not fucking funny, Doc, okay? So now here's what happened. I'm going to explain this to you, because this is what happened. They actually put a camera. This is what they do now, is shove a camera up your ass all the way. When I say up, I mean he was checking my fucking molars, I swear to God. So I'm laying on my side, and I got this camera shoved up my ass, and the doctor comes over like it's some big revelation, and he goes, if you want, you can watch it on the TV. I'm laying on my side with a camera shoved up my ass. The doctor comes by, he turns the TV on. A guy comes out and goes, but first, the weather. Ah! Thank you. My name's Nick Meadows. Thank you all very much. This is great.